Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Um, so I recorded uh, two clips that feature later in this episode, but I didn't really know where to put them besides here. So I just kind of put a little, I'm making this thing to, you know, introduce the episode and be like, hey, so uh, some more stuff happens later in the episode. But uh, yeah. But yeah, I'm Alfred Welcome to Morrowind. It's a very distorted episode, but don't worry, it's a good one. Any time now. Y'all, I don't know if this is the right place for it. Hi, I'm Alfred. Um, I just got back from swimming, which is why my hair's like this, and I've got a towel, and I've got my trunks. Um, I, I just got back from swimming. Some drama happened. I had to talk about it. I don't know if my Morrowind LP is the right place to do so. But there's no other place I could think of. Um, so... I was at the pool. I was doing laps. Our pool is large enough for me to sit there uh, and have a, a section of the pool to myself without seeing anyone else. And so there were five people in the pool. There were two girls who were off to one side smoking pot. But, like, I'm not a snitch, so that's all we'll say about them for now. And there was then a guy and a girl... And the two girls were on the right side, and the guy and the girl were on the left side, and I was in the middle. Go ahead, stranger. <laughs> so, the two girls are just chatting, fucking shooting the shit, whatever. Let's hear it. And then, sorry, my cat's licking my feet right now. I think it's because of my the chlorine on me. But I don't know if you should drink that, bud. You're so weird and gross. Ow! He's biting me. Get out of here. Um. My other cat's here, too, now. There they are, being little weirdos together. All right, anyway. So, I was at the pool. Two girls were there. Two girls were on the other side. Whatever. The guy and the girl have been talking and hitting on each other for, like, an hour. You know. Not weird or anything, just, like, consensual. Consensual, sorry. Consensual. Just, you know, Can I do anything to help? being cool, being fine, whatever. So, <laughs> fucking... His face is in her, her boobies, right? They're, they're macking, for real. They're honestly macking in this pool. But I'm in my part of the pool, so I don't care. I'm, I'm over here. I don't need to give a if shit. You need a good laugh or a tall tale, yes, Outlander. What may I do right for you? I don't, I don't need to worry about it, you know? I don't need to think or care about it. So, fucking... This is what happens. After I had been there for, like, an hour, this other girl shows up. And she watches the man and the woman, whose name I later learned was Stefan, she watches the man and the woman for, like, a couple of minutes. Bad start already. <laughs> and then she's like, Stefan! <laughs> and he leaps out of the water like goddamn Free Willy. And he's like, Destiny! <laughs> and she's like, Stefan, what the fuck were you doing? And he's just like, Destiny, it's not what you think. And she's like, bullshit, you were all up on her. Why were you sitting together? And he's like, no, Destiny, it's not what you think. We were just talking. And they go back and forth like that for a couple of minutes. Like, you were sitting next to her. We were just talking. You were sitting right next to her. You were just talking. And then so he gets out of the pool to like chase after her and grabs his stuff. And this poor woman just also gets her stuff who's on the chair next to his and and destiny's like y'all sitting together on the in the pool y'all sitting together on the chair y'all y'all not just talking at this point i'm uh, screaming into my own hands because what else do you do um and i think that the other two girls were as well by this point it had been a couple of hours they had Stopped the smokage of uh, their substances of choice. 
Uh, but we're not here to question the choices of others unless they are screamed out in the middle of the night in an apartment complex where you are standing next to six other buildings in a little conflux of apartment buildings and the other six around them can still probably hear you. Those are the choices we're here to question. That's what I'm talking about. So, Seven goes to chase after her and they go back and forth for a little bit. And meanwhile, the girl Stefan was with, I don't know her name, I hope she's doing well, just gets up and gets a towel and puts like a t-shirt on and, and stuff, you know, just yada yada, whatever, whatever. And she fucking goes to the other girls and immediately makes friends with them, as you do. And she's like, do y'all know her? And they're like, no, but we know Stefan. So Stefan's not like a horn dog. He's not just like preying on women at the pool. He was just here with this girl. And then Destiny showed up and was like, why were you, why were you sitting next to her, Stefan? And so in the argument that I couldn't hear because they'd gotten too far away, but they left through that side of the pool. So, you know, those two could hear them. Apparently, she said, considering our history, why would you try to get together with a girl like that? Well, she said a bitch, but that's impolite. Um, and so, like... Bro? They weren't even together. Like, the things that they... The things that were exchanged... In, in that leg of the conversation to me imply they're not together. History should mean that it's not a thing, right? So they're not together, so it's okay for this girl to hit on Stefan and vice versa. But then why is Stefan like destiny? It's not what you think. And so in the gossip, the girl's like, I don't know why he feels the need to lie. Because if it's just history and they're not together, then why would we say we were just talking like, bro, your penis was inside of me. She said this. <laughs> she, she said this. Um, <laughs> and then one of the girls like, I mean, I don't know if I would go that far. And she's like, no, it was. <laughs> so... I've just been screaming to myself the, the walk home because what the fuck do you do when something like this happens? And like, I have something of a platform and something of an audience and there's a lot of dead air in Morrowind and some people don't like to, you know, some people do want to like listen to my, my stuff as I talk. And like, I can just machine gun out Morrowind. I don't have to think about it. This is a game that I'm pretty good at. And so much of it is just walking anyway. So yeah, that's what that's where that's where my night went. I finished my laps and I went home and I didn't cheat on my wife. Or alternatively, try to cheat on like have a girlfriend that like I'm um, still interested in but like, not actively with. Like, I was nothing but confused the whole time. That was a strange, strange, it's a weird kind of night. So like, yeah, I'm just kind of <laughs> confused by all of it. Because if you're cheating on your wife, and the girl, to her credit, was like, I'm not a homewrecker. Don't don't say that about me, because I'm not trying. I didn't know. It's like, no, honey, we, we believe you. We trust you. Man ain't shit. No. If, if you said you didn't know Stefan had a, a girlfriend or wife, bro, I fucking believe you. You know? Like, 
I don't know what the fuck, man. <laughs> and like, in my Morrowind LP, I talk. You know, I talk about the game, and I talk about other games, and I talk about my life. And I'm just kind of at a loss here, because... <laughs> this did technically occur while I was doing my challenges for the Morrowind LP. I don't record my swimming, but as I'm doing now, I, I'm swimming and my pool's open, so I'm more open to swimming and I've been doing those parts of the challenges. And let it be known, yes, I am still doing the challenges. They're just, they're like the hardest thing I've ever had to edit or record. Well, recording them is actually pretty easy, but editing them is such a pain. So yeah, that's, uh, that's how I, that's, I, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know what to say about it. Like, Stefan's got his Mac on, I guess. Like, is he trying to have his fucking cake and eat it too? And, like, she had been there for minutes. How is he going to be like, bro, we were just talking. Your face was in her boobies, dude. Like, even if you didn't know that she had been there and had been watching for you know, minutes at a time, why would you lie anyway if you're not together? Like... I mean, maybe it's just, you know, more simple than that, and like, he's just cheating on her. But then why would she say, considering our history, you know? Like... <laughs> it's very strange. So yeah, that's why I had to come here directly from the pool. Like, basically as soon as I was dry enough to sit down in my chair, I did so. <laughs> uh, and I still have this towel, and I do have my trunks on. Let it be known. I'm not just... I've never recorded an LP nude, and I would tell you if I did. I've considered, but like... I have too many fun t-shirts. My wife buys me nice t-shirts, and I'm like, I should show this in a video, because I can't go outside. Um, actually, I'll be able to go outside soon, so... I'll still show them in videos, though. That's not going to change. But yeah, so, like... Meanwhile, while gossip is happening, one can still hear Stefan and Destiny, like... Destiny screeching at Stefan. Stefan loudly kind of pathetically trying to defend himself. And like... actually loud enough for the entire apartment complex to hear. Like, we've got like 12 buildings or so here. Maybe more than that. And like, dude, I'm, I'm just so taken aback and blown away by this. And yeah, again, maybe a Morrowind LP is not the uh, channel to discuss this. But hey, for those who are watching, maybe it'll be a nice surprise. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess I'll cut this recording and then do the rest of it later, because <laughs> I need to shower and dry off and fortify myself after my hard day swimming, so, like, I've got to shampoo my hair. I'm, it's gonna, it's gonna crack off like, like, icicles. So, um, that's how my night went. So, I found this really solid grinding technique. You just go outside in a zone featuring Daedra, pound on them, and then dispose of the corpse. And then when you come back outside, there'll be another one, because the corpse is gone, and the game is like, well, we should respawn again. Now granted, this technique of grunting does require you 
to be able to reliably kill a whole bunch of Daedra. But you can see that I've amassed quite the treasure trove thanks to it. That said, I don't know if there's enough money in the entire game world to buy all of this, much less enough weight on my back to carry it. But I have amassed 20 pounds of Daedra hearts and quite a lot of void salts as well. So, it could be a useful technique, you know, if you need it. And we're back in. So yeah, as I mentioned, I've been grinding here and I've also been doing a lot of uh, chores for the Fighters Guild. Does camps have nipples? I just noticed that. Ugh. See, I filled myself up to five pounds below my carry limit, so I hope I don't find any good loot. But part of that is because I left my trusty, reliable uh, Wakizashi, Daedric Wakizashi, behind in exchange for this new spanking Daedric Katana. And I think I might have replaced this with a new one as well, but whatever. I'll take it. So yes, I am, I've headed to Wolverine Hall, which is uh, up here inside Ithmora, which I believe is named after Hermaeus Mora, the Daedric Prince of Knowledge. But yes, Wolverine Hall is a local um, building, I think it was built by the Empire, uh, that houses the Fighters Guild, or at least the chapter of Sadith Mora. And it's one of the only places, so I think I should have learned my lesson from last time. Ah, greetings. What shall we you and I will explore together. I... Can I back out of this? I'm ready. Crap. I, I literally was saying I should have learned my lesson, because we had that thing where that one person died while I was trying to help them along their way. But yeah, that one person died while I was trying to help them through their thing. I guess I should leave these corpses, huh? Uh, and I got in big trouble with the guild when I got back. So I should try to keep her alive a little harder. According to her, though, she's lost this round. Or you've lost this round. Um, I just took a shower, which is why my hair is wet. I left these steel boots here. But yes. Um, for what might be the first time, I'm talking over an episode that features me doing fighter guild, Fighters Guild tasks. Raw clap. I don't care if it over encumbers me. Now, is there anything that I can do? Thank you, Flynn. My cat's on my desk. Normally, he's not a desk kitty, but he's. Let me, let me see if I can show you. Vengeance. He's being very good right now. I think he misses me. If you chew on those wires, you might die. They'll zap you and kill you instantly. And then I'd be X1 Kitty, and that would suck. The beast is near now, very near. I'm well aware the beast is near, fam. Do you have anything good? <laughs> More scrap metal. So yes, a Daedroth is the singular term for a specific type of Daedra. Elurok fortifies the spear skill. That's kind of interesting. Nordic Iron Helm, a keg, of course. Scroll of Healing, nice, I like that. But yes, a Daedroth is the term for a Daedra singular. Ooh. 
Fine by me. Steel left column. Shoot. Come on, really? Oh, right, I need to... What do I have on me? Levitate. So I need to drink a suit. Jeez, oh, Pete. How silly. I'm still gonna die, fam. So I've realized something. Even if I don't have the ability to use spells, that doesn't really matter because if I'm just using them via dumb shit, like my, um, I have a lock spell, I do. If I'm using them via things like this. Oh, good. I had the key. I really should have remembered that, in fact. Ooh, Dwemer coins. Dwemer cylinder. So yeah, anyway, I was I was thinking like Hey yeah, on the one hand, I don't really need to uh I have been limiting my use of items. Because I can't use magic in real life, so there's no way for me to do that. But I realized... If there's no way for my character to do magic of his own, that's fine. So what I should be doing is... Cat's knocking shit over on my desk. So what's fine is... Thank you. So yeah, if I'm just going to use magic via scrolls and stuff, then like, it doesn't matter that I can't do that in the real world. Because the idea of this whole challenge is that I am my Morrowind character. I have, you know, I would take the place of him. So I've realized that yes, I can start to use things like that. Because initially I was like, I shouldn't use that. Because it'll be like, because like, that's not cool, you know? But now, does it really matter? I would use that in real life to get back quicker. So why not use it in the game as well? Go ahead, stranger. Right, I've got all the drugs on me. Uh, what was the other thing I was talking? So she refers to Daedroth there. A daedra is sometimes the singular and sometimes the plural. Never sure on which is which, but... Let me get some of the heavier stuff out of my inventory. By heavy, I really mean less expensive stuff.
Sorry, I'm thinking instead of talking. Pardonnez-moi, I know that you come here to listen to me. I assume. So yeah, Daedra plural is sometimes the thing. Oh, for God's Let's sake. Hear it. I'm pretty sure that I've left some moon sugar somewhere because, like, because of this dumb mechanic. Anyway, some use Daedroth as the plural of Daedra, or the singular of Daedra, assuming that Daedroth... Sorry, assuming that Daedra is the plural. But there is a beast that is called a Daedroth, and it just named that, and it's kind of unfortunate because it's confusing. That's all. Thank you. Let's see if you got anything else. I'll take these off you, actually. And what's more, that one was even named. Helvisu. Kind of interesting. Ooh, that's too much. Give me another one back, then. Fine by me. This mechanic is really dumb, because how is it possible that every single merchant is able to just, like, see the fact that you have... Stolen for the last time. Let's reload that. How is every single merchant able to just, like, instantly scope out, scan, and see, hey, you've got moon sugar on you. I'm not going to deal with you now. Ugh, you know? And it doesn't really mean anything. It just means that you have to take it out of your inventory, put it on the desk right next... Put it on the desk right next to them. You know, within sight of them. And then you can deal. I forgot to buy spells from him. I don't foresee myself using them, but I want them for other purposes. I was actually able to soul trap a couple of things, which was pretty cool. This is, yeah. Wow. Selling that at a loss, aren't I? Give us some more unhinging. The soul trap. <laughs> That's a lot of features. This thing's called Last Rites. That's kind of dope. All right. May I help you? Do you want something? I see you. Hello. You can travel me. Oh, you can just. W That's really useful. Uh, I'll be back because I need to get to Balmora. I didn't know that you could do that. I almost never play with the mages' guilds. I see that that's been my loss. Fighters Guild. To you, right? Than most tourists I've met. She I was pleased with your work. Here's the 500 septums I owe you. You are the defender. Uh, mainland. Oh, boy. That's not very far. Handle that. Uh, 
I had no idea that you could just teleport from place to place. That's pretty damn useful. Uh, crunch. So, um... It's now day f 74. So coming up, I will soon be able to finally go and get Goldbrand. And I wanted to talk about this. There is a secret, secret side quest. Really more of a... Easter egg than a real side quest. Especially considering the way that side quests are tagged in this game. Any quest, really. But it is possible to upgrade Goldbrand. And it becomes a sword called... I've been going the wrong shagging way. There we go. It's possible to upgrade Goldbrand. And it upgrades to a sword called Elton Brand. However, the requirements to do so are very specific. You need a specific amount of gold, a very specific item, and you need to be an... You need to be a vampire. And I... And when you find the character in question that can increase the power of this, you know, already perfect god blade, it plays a... It, it says a silly message. I forget what the message is, but it's like, Hi, Charlotte, or something like that. Um... Which is something that makes me think that it's not really intended. Um, and as far as I know, Elton Brand only appears in this game. I'm also not sure what it means. Why can the, you know, this perfect sword made by one of the Daedric Princes of War be improved by some rando? but only if you're a vampire. But yes, Elton Brand is just straight up better than Goldbrand. In the Elder Scrolls, there is a sort of competitive balance to everything. Um, for example, obviously a steel sword is better than an iron sword, and a Dwemer sword better than a steel one. But every upgrade in damage you get will be a downgrade in weight. Um, I know this to be fact in Skyrim, but the lightest set of heavy armor is still lighter than the heaviest set of light armor. That said, those two things are the worst set of heavy armor and the best set of light armor, respectively. So, are you snoring? My cat's still on my desk, and I think he's starting to snore. He's such a gross little boy. Anyway, you know, things are sort of balanced. Things that are only better... Things that are better in damage are not as good in weight. That sort of thing. He's definitely snoring. Do you guys see this, and you're not like... Yeah, I can take him. The fact that these randos are named still worries me. Does that tell fear? What is this? I don't remember where I am. Probably will as soon as I get in, though. But anyway, yes, Elton Brand is completely superior to its counterpart, Gold Brand. I don't know you. What do you want? Skuma is an illegal. Yada yada yada. The freshest ingredients in town. really pared down my weapons. Oops. I want that one. What I need to get rid of is you and you. You have moon sugar. Alright, I 
and I've got a master's mortar pistol already. Oh yeah, I did a little soul trapping too. And you know what, I'll take it. So even though you have moon sugar, you won't buy my moon sugar from me. Can't be that way, dickhead. Speak traveler. Speak traveler. We're now getting to the point where it's very hard for me to... Why did I even pick it back up? See something you like. It's getting very hard for me to even, like, run out of money. I'm getting very, very famous and powerful. Oh, right, your faction. Man, I'm gonna have to go through old joining all the factions I just realized. I haven't done that in a while. Usually I don't get so far in the main quest. Heading the wrong way again. I just took a shower, which is my, why my hair is a little damp, but it's also been freshly conditioned. Go ahead. So even though skooma is illegal, the guards won't stop you and be like, hey, you have skooma, fuck you. It's just, what a, what a bad mechanic, you know? I've talked about this in the past, but forever the sign of a bad mechanic is if it does not return. Remember the Chalice Dungeons from Bloodborne? They wish you wouldn't. That's why they didn't put it in Dark Souls 3 and why Sekiro has a vastly different version of the of anything even resembling something like a Chalice Dungeon. Like, fuck, Sekiro has a bloody palace, not a Chalice Dungeon. Um, And, you know, as with... Things like being able to miss an enemy you're standing right next to because your stat isn't high enough as opposed to you just like, you know, hitting a guy because you're right next to him, you know? And you're swinging the sword in his general direction and there's no conceivable way that you could miss. They change it so you just hit him in Oblivion and Skyrim and every... Everything after that. And I don't know if anything besides, like, those weird first-person D&D games that I think are trying to be Ultima do that. I, I think those are the only things that do that now. Because, come on. It's stupid. You're just totally asleep. I hope he doesn't, like, unplug anything. I don't know. I don't think he will, but, like, I'm just worried that his fat will, like, unplug something with just, you know, his weight. He's not a very fat cat. He's actually gotten to a very healthy weight now. I'm very proud of him. He was, um... I've talked about my beautiful boy before, but... I'm going to again, because this is my show. Fuck you. Be something good, you piece of garbage. But Vengeance um, is a rescue cat. Much like his little big brother Vash. Um, Vengeance was someone who was rescued and fostered by... Uh, I guess, like, professional foster parents. Foster cat parents, you know. Cat foster parents? Foster parent cats? Anyway. Um, he was fostered by somebody who does so regularly.
Um, and he had a name that sucked. Just because, you know, I imagine they got a name like a hundred cats every year, so they got to go alphabetically. And so his name is... His birth name was very boring. So we refer to that as his Christian name because it's very lame and it's only what is, you know... Like original rescuers called him and we call him vengeance now and I will not dead name him because I love him and he's my baby boy um but when when he was first found he looked like this like crappy shitty little like roast turkey you know like a like a plucked chicken that's what he looked like um he was so skinny and he and he was nearly dead and like I don't know if he was the the kind of skinny that, like, if you do get food, you'll die. Because your body is, like, so hungry that introducing food to it after being so hungry for so long will just kill you. I don't know if he was that bad, but he was close. Um, and he was covered in fleas. And he was given, like, a complete makeover. And he still got a little scar on his ear. But well, I, I still love him besides, you know, despite his little scar. Oh, he's getting up. Oh, he's doing a big stretchy. What do you say, boy? It's got a good long face. Ignore my prescription back there in the background. It's how I remind myself to take it. But yes, and he plumped up nicely. And then he plumped up too nicely. And then we had to try to make sure that he didn't overread because he would if he gave him, if he had have a chance. Uh, and his little brother Vash, who was named that because it's French for cow, and he he's black and white, and we thought that he was a, a girl. But anyway, um, his brother Vosh, we rescued him directly ourselves. Like, we found him on the street. And we picked him up. And he's more standoffish. He doesn't like people as much. The Vengeance, he's turned into just quite a little cuddle bug. Vosh enjoys his distance, but he still comes up for treats and the occasional pet. How could I hit something with any katana? How could you hit a rat with any katana? Much less this, like, cursed demon katana. And it doesn't just immediately implode on itself. That's impossible. Ooh, wow, yeah. Heckalo leaf is pretty good. I like that. You know, calling somebody with such extravagant gear and clothing Fetcher is pretty rich coming from a homeless man who just stands in the wilderness trying to, like, assault random travelers for their money. He pushed my wallet off the counter. You know cats, pushing things off of things. Yeah, like, look at you guys. I literally looked away from the screen and was in no danger. I don't know what it is about Bethesda games, but like, even... Even Fallout New Vegas, which is still pretty good about this. People are still like, oh look, it's the savior of all of humanity. I bet I could mug him for like a couple of pennies with my iron sword. That'd be pretty cool. Like, you're just, you're just gleaming and golden and like indestructible and like you're riding a dra like you can literally get off a dragon in Skyrim and some random mercenary who has paid like 150 gold by some random old woman will be like all right you're at the end of your rope bud like you can literally get off a dragon wearing armor made of the souls of cursed demons and people are still going to be like 
I haven't been here before, have I? Northeast. Oh, I'm not. I'm not in the right place. That's fine then. Never eat. So it's this way. I'm gonna shave again. I'm starting to get shaggy. So yeah, um, I'm posting this after the video where I read the 36 lessons of Vivek, and that one got um, a pretty decent following, or not following, got a pretty decent uh, response. I'm proud of it. So I'm definitely going to read more, um, as though if it got a bad response, anyone would be able to stop me. Here we go. Glass deposits are the richest in the world. Don't think you can come in here and pick the stuff up. This belongs to the Emperor. My time is precious, so make it quick. Your last mistake, thief. You make this too easy. Now you die! Oh. Wow. They actually put up a fight. Always impressive. You're in a raw glass mine. It belongs to the Emperor. Don't touch the raw glass. The guards will kill you. I will listen up. Are you here to help? We've been having some trouble in Disapla Mine. A pack of Nyx hounds was attacking my miners. We thought one of the miners was lost, but he turned up safe. Our healer, Terrace Arothan, went down to look for her and hasn't come back. Did you go to the mines and bring back Terrace if he still lives? I'd go myself, but I should stay here to protect the miners if the Nyx hounds come this way. What's Sarah? Just a random What's cop. Name? I'm waiting. Nothing, I guess. I will listen, Outlander, but make it quick. It's very. I, I find the Thieves Guild very silly, considering that it's like a franchise. That's the main thing about it that I think is fun and a little stupid. The fact that there's like so many. Like, do they have regional meetings? <laughs> you fools. Can't keep my sticky fingers off of things for very long. Man, when we get to Skyrim, it is going to just be theft central. Hey, all right. There's an exploit one can do in Skyrim. Wow, there's some goodies here. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to sell all of this crap off. Um, I don't know if I should level up as well, because my strength is over 100, which should be impossible. But you can I think you can temporarily get it there. Oh, hey. Save here. And let's go. So what, you've just been standing there? Can Nick Sounds not climb stairs? I don't understand this. Like they they said that he went missing and then he turned up safe. So why is he still here? No for. Hmm. 
Have I gone the wrong way? Because that would make sense. I feel as though I'm lost. Make it quick, Outlander. Just trying to get this idiot back to his home. Yep, don't worry, no raw glass here. Speak, traveler. Oh, yeah, this is funny as well. I'll take a bath. You can just swallow raw glass. Go ahead. I'll He's thank you. Thank you for re rescuing him. Oh, four raw glass. Cool. Uh, goodbye. So, the spell I'm using is Divine Intervention. What it actually does is it teleports you back to the nearest... Everything's all smoothed over. Caravan loose between the trader shop and Telamora. Hey, tell more. more refined than most tourists I've met. <laughs> I like that. Now, where is Telmora? I'm at Sajathora. Let's tell Aaron. Um, can you oh good grandmaster's armor or hammer cool you can't actually offer me anything can you we share the same company what can I do all right, let me quickly Google where Talmora is. Oh, it's actually pretty close. Yeah, it's north of here. Okay. That's fine then. I should have assumed what with a name being Mora. What's this you know, I've always thought that hitting training dummies should still level your skills. I know that's not like a hot take or anything, but. Actually, I'm on the water, right? Maybe I can take a boat there. Assuming I can find a boat. See if you could find a boat. Old meme, sorry. Oh yeah, I received bad news recently. I know that's like not a good starter, but um, I learned that one of my favorite VTubers is leaving Hololive. For those not abreast, I'm sure you've probably seen VTubing here and there. It's a thing where you use a little virtual avatar instead of a normal face, and in some cases play a character. It allows you to protect your identity a little easier, and what's more, you don't have to show your face on camera, but you can still get all the cloud of a Let's Player with a face cam. And Hololive is a company that has a bunch. Travel. Can you get me to tell? You can. What Look at that. Barewin the Trader Shop.
Well, Barrowin's a traitor. That's what I've ascertained so far. It will trapped upstairs, but it's no one wants to risk disease by getting close to it. Normally, Arian would take care of it, but he's so busy. Please hurry, it's wrecking my shop. I don't know if I can help you, but I'll try. How'd you guys trap it upstairs exactly? Oh. It couldn't possibly get over these crates weighed down by a large quama egg. Anyway, yes, I recently learned that, um... Kiryu Koko is going to be leaving. Do I have a lock ripper? Hollow Live. That's it. Boy, do I feel dumb for ripping you off. So, uh, yeah, this corporate stalker ate all your scuttle. It's a little well known, uh, it's a. Yeah, anyway. Symptoms of the corpus, it's a whole thing. What is this about, Dunmer? I don't like your fucking tone. Thank you for dispatching it. You obviously have great skill. Hey, I know that you're my best friend and all, but still get those fucking drugs out of your pocket. Druggy. What? I just saved your life is all. Horny fist bracer. That's good. I like that. Spear of Light. See, Kiryu Koko, her deal was that she was this, like, cute red-headed dragon girl. She was very, very weird. The first clip I ever saw of her is... She was talking about how she had to get, like, a, a, a little scan of her throat. And while they were scanning her throat, it like, ooh, that's a little much. It like awoke something in her. Like she says it awoke a, a throat fetish or something, which is just so. You'll get yours, thief. Oh, right. That was your. Yeah, I guess that was pretty dumb of me to try to sell. If there's anything I can do, I am humbly at your service. Hu I thought she said hungry at your service. Anyway, you're not meant to talk about like a VTuber's real identity because that's it's a little doxy. You're supposed to avoid it, but like. I happen to find someone who's, like, remarkably similar. It was pretty great. Much better. Let's see if I can't get rid of some of this, huh? Stormhelm. That thing's actually pretty cool. Unfortunately, I've leveled far, far past it, but... At some point, I'll have enough health for it to not matter. Alright. Now, where is Voss? Okay. Last scene in Voss. Just one? This should be a cakewalk. That's funny. 
I've mentioned this in the past, but there are very, very subtle ways that one can establish that a mute character still has a lot of character to be getting on with, which is always appreciated. To know that the Nereverine is a snide, sneaky little bitch is very good. There's a secret. Actually, I think I might just do this. Normally be like, there's a little thing that you can do for yourself in your own playthrough, but I've just realized I might just do it. So, look forward to that. For those of you who have played Morrowind, it involves the Telvanni. That helps you puzzle anything else. All right, who are we looking for? Rel's Tenim, last seen in Voss. I've been having a very moral windy day, actually. And in, in addition to, um, I walked a whole lot, you know, for the challenge, but also for my health. For God's sakes. For the challenge and for my health. I'm in Voss, right? Yeah. Not to be confused with Vass, which is here. Yep. Is there like a Vess somewhere around here? That'd be kind of funny. And like a Vus. But in addition to walking and swimming, the farmers, huh? These are cool, actually. I'll get these. Chameleon can be useful. I actually already have Ancestral Ghost. Feather's good. Well, thank yes, you. Now I just gotta find the farmers. That's not that worth it. <laughs> I guess I locked it. Oh, it must lock from the inside. I guess that makes sense. All right, the farmers. Talk to the farmers. I'm still recording everything okay right I'll finish this quest and then uh, cut the episode war and crops Watch check this. north of here god damn you guys who wants some Hemusa. What is it? Hemusa. North of here. Again, why do the scamps gotta sound like that? It's way too human-y. Actually, I'll cut here. I found my way to the Anhemusa camp. They have these guys, Pack Wars, which I adore. Uh, yeah, I'll find the white guar, I guess. Ahead, um, I'm need? in the middle of something. Uh, Rel's Tenorim. Cavernous Shallot. Island southwest of Al's Daedroth. Northwest. If I come to an old Dwemer ruin, I've traveled too far. The fact that, like, the directions in Morrowind actually contain 
Hey, if you see this thing, you've gone too far. It's so... How do I put this? Authentic? I was driving somewhere with my grandfather last weekend. And this man, honest to God... Like, pulled over and asked somebody for directions. And like, I know like, oh wow, a man who doesn't ask for directions, uh, a man who can ask for directions, amazing. And like, yeah, sure, that's a really outdated stereotype, but like, fucking whatever. The point of it is that like, he asked somebody for directions in 2021, like, hey, how do you get here? How do you, how do you drive to here? Like, it, it is a, a fucking Catholic virtue that the people he was talking to weren't like, oh yeah, uh, first pull out your phone and then do whatever the fuck that says, boomer. Like, holy shit, man. <laughs> I should actually cut here again, I will. So, I guess I'll record this part. Over there is the Drathen Ancestral Tomb. And north of it should be... Shallot, I believe is the name of the thing that they're in. On the one hand, it is kind of marvelous that, like, every... a lot of the bandits in Morrowind are named. On the other, the names are all nonsense. I believe that's a dwarven thing that they mentioned. So this should be Shallot. Nice. And then yeah, that one um, wise woman was like, find the white gua. I've seen you in my dreams, you're the Kwisatz Haderach, etc, etc, you know. Blade for the new man, set him ahead and set up his arrangements. Dinner's waiting, but not for you. Move really is sick again, so you've drawn sentry duty. Don't worry, you'll be getting a portion of his share. Stay alert, bounty hunters are seeking us, but I feel secure up here. I wonder if you could equip that sword and... Ooh, that's cool. I wonder if you could equip that sword and then just like show up like, hey, I'm the new guy. So Alm Sylvie intervention works the same as the normal divine intervention. And as I mentioned, Divine Intervention just takes you back to the nearest uh, place of worship, whatever that is or may be. Oh, it actually exits into the Drayan Ancestral Tomb. Man, I've really been putting off the main quest. I was just thinking how it's been like seven episodes. What is this? This is 15. So yeah, it's been like if I start the main quest next time, it'll be seven episodes. for some bothersome flies to swat. I'm a-coming. Yeah, you see this giant, like... Really, dude? I'm literally like, I guess you've got an enchanted weapon, but those are pretty common. I, on the other hand, have a daedric weapon, which is not common. Oh, good. I can those back. Oh, now I'm over encumbered, huh? I'm gonna swallow a Daedra heart just because. I'm gonna sip some grief as well.
Will I? Ooh, you actually got some hits in. You should be proud. Oops. Okay, I got stuck there a little bit. Next. Oh, he summoned a scamp. No, my most fearsome opponent. There goes one. Wow. You got some good hits in, I'll admit. I want another silver staff. I miss my old one, even though it doesn't actually do anything. Doesn't do very much damage. You're gonna feel really bad when I whoop your ass, dude. <laughs> Funny. I guess I can keep this behind. Iron Shard Sword. Shoeing Broadsword. Ooh, a bunch of jewels. struck a bargain with evil. I'm uncomfortable and feel some unease with our current arrangement. I believe these worms will serve us for some time. Those who hope to destroy me must be of stout spirit and cutting mind. For they forge ahead in these caves, they may meet a fate far worse than death. When we first discovered these caves and began the explorations, we were sure we had found refuge from enemies. But little did we know we'd push the interior chambers what we could find. In the final chamber, we came to a ruined portal upon the ruined portal to a fast tomb. We eager to chance upon some riches, but instead we found ourselves in the nest of deadly creatures. By our wits and skill of arms, able to retreat to the dark lair. By the time we sealed the entry, for a time we sealed the entry, but the threat continued to gnaw us. It was Gideon who conceived the plan with which we presented to those beings of darkness. In, right for our, in return for our right to dwell within these caves, we provide sustenance. To assist us in these ventures, we've created a lure, a path for the bounty hunters and meddlesome folk to follow. The unwary will find themselves in the clutches of a black fate. Mulvrula is very unhappy with the current conditions, and I'm finding myself concurring. This cannot come to a good end, but I must stay the course until new safe can be found. Ah, oh, Sermon 32. I'll drink a few of these. No, that's not enough for you. Silver Viper Sword. Whatever. And that's all. Wait, you're Rells, right? Yeah, okay. Which means... That I'm in the wrong place. I'm near Balmora, aren't I? See, so one thing that's a little weird and... Maybe, like, not really, like... It's not, like, terrible about the Fighter's Guild in this game... Yeah, there's Balmora. I'll be damned. It's not like a cardinal sin by any means, but like you can only get certain things when you're a certain rank from the Fighters Guild. Sometimes that's training, but sometimes that's quests. And they're actually quests for Aedas Fire Eye, the 
Fighters Guild lady back in Valmora that I have not yet done. I will not be able to do them until I advance far enough. Because there's no real way of telling what is what, you kind of just have to know. Which is pretty annoying. Now here's the real killer. Some members of the Fighters Guild, I will not say who, although I don't think it really matters that much, are involved with the Thieves Guild, secretly. And depending on your position in the quest line, you may be asked to kill them. Now, if you have been playing the Thieves Guild and the Fighters Guild quest line, you can get one of them to side with you, but the other one will not change their mind. What this means is that you can permanently lose those Fighters Guild quests. In addition to some of them, just you wouldn't know that you'd be able to do it because you can't see the future. Yeah, thank you. But yeah, for some of them, you cannot like do the quest because of some bullshit. But in this case, there's a completely different reason where you like have to just know that now that you're this rank, you can go back to Aedas Fire Eye, or, you know, you can go back to Balmora or Vec and ask for more guild quests. It's just a little annoying. It makes, you know, completing it kind of a pain. It's just one of those things that this type of quest book where things are put in sequentially is really annoying. And you know, it does make sense. The Nero Everine is supposed to be writing these things down for himself, but come on. All right, so I teleported back to the wrong place, but I ended up going to Balmora, so that's good at least. Speak freely, friend. Okay, sir. Um, I picked up a quest in Balmora. I'll probably do it off camera. I remember the Mage's Guild is on the top floor and the Fighters is on the bottom floor. Cat's putting his button to my camera. All right. If he moves again, you'll know. It's currently balanced on him. All right. Rel's Tenem is dead. Corpus Stalker is dead. All right. Thank you. Let's go orders. Go to Sujama. I'm going to do this off camera, um, but I'll see you guys next time. I've been Alfred. This has been Morrowind. The next time. The Blade. Have a good day.